Traditional Thai Massage. Welcome to Native Yoga Center and Palm Beach Thai Massage, where here I'll demonstrate a one hour traditional northern style Thai massage routine. Begin by warm your hands, warm hands, warm heart. Prepare for the session by taking your attention into the present moment. First, begin by grab the client's feet and begin to palm press, alternate palm press walk on the feet from the heels toward the big toes. Walk back and forth, right and left, using alternate palm pressure to help warm the feet to begin to set the tone for the entire massage session by creating a nice steady rhythm. <clears throat> now palm press walk up the inside edge of the calf musculature up to the knees in a one, two, three pattern. Palm circle about five times in one direction and five times in the other on top of the kneecaps. After you complete palm circling the knees, palm press walk up the front of the thigh in a one, two, three pattern up toward the hip and then walk back down in a three, two, one pattern until you're just above the kneecaps. Make palm circles on the knees a couple times in one direction, a few times in the other. And then alternate palm press walk back down the calves again to the feet. When you reach the feet, continue to palm press walk in a one, two, three, two, one pattern from the heel toward the big toe. Now, we're working the five lines on the bottoms of the feet. In Thai massage, there, what are, there are what are called sen lines, S-E-N, sen lines. These are the energetic lines within the body <clears throat> that within Thai massage, we use thumb pressure, acupressure point work along the energy lines. And here I'm working the five lines on the bottom of the feet. What happens is you start just above the calcaneus and you thumb press, simultaneous thumb press out along the line to the big toe. And then you follow the line out to the second toe. Here I'm working the third line, thumb pressing simultaneously, both hands press, release, press, release. When you get to the third toe, you make some th finger thumb circles, work all the way to the end and give a little pull. Again, here on the fourth line, palm press walk, work from the calcaneus on the sole of the foot all the way along the fourth line of the foot to the fourth toe, finger circle, give a little pull and release. Come back to the fifth line. Now we're working simultaneous thumb pressure point work along the lateral edge of the bottom of the foot. When you get to the pinky toe, make a couple of thumb circles and when you get to the pinky toe tip, pinch release. Now we're working the top tops of the feet the four lines in between each of the toes. We're gonna go in between the <clears throat> lines there between the big and second toe until you get down to the big toe. And then we're gonna make, when we get to the big toe, some thumb circles on the big toe. And just kind of loosen the joint, a little pinch pull release, and then come back up to the little notch, the base of the ankle at the anterior angle, and then come down in between the second and third metatarsal. When you get to the second toe, give a few finger circles release. Come back up, work between the third and fourth toe lines, come all the way down. When you get down to the toes, go to the third toe, give a little finger circle, pinch release, come back up. Work th simultaneous thumb press in between the fifth and fourth metatarsals. And when you get to the toes, go to the fourth toe, give a few little finger circles on the toe, pinch and release. And now we're just gonna finger circle along the lateral edge of the foot working our way toward the pinky toe. When you get to the pinky toe, give a little pinch pull and release. Good. Continue with alternate palm press walk on the feet, working from the heels toward the big toes and one, two, three, back to number two, one pattern. Palm press walk up the calves in a one, two, three pattern up toward the knees and make some palm circles on the knees about five times one direction and five times in the other. Palm press walk up the anterior thigh on the quadriceps femoris muscle along up to the inguinal crease of the hip 
and then work your way back down in a three, two, one to the knees. Palm circle the knees five times in one direction and then work your way down the calf muscles in the three, two, one, all the way back down to the feet. Alternate palm press work the feet again as a way to basically just relax the nervous system of the client. Okay, now come to a seated position, lift their right leg and rest their leg on your left leg. We're going to do ankle rotations five times in one direction. Here we're able to affect tractioning at the hip. Here we're reversing in the other direction, which basically helps to move the entire body. Now we're doing twist the foot in a one, two, three in a lateral direction, working the way to the big toe and then coming back to number two and number one. Now we're going to go into internal rotation, twist foot in a two, three, two, one pattern. When you get back to the foot, now we're going to do crack the toes, which basically means work the big toe, do some thumb circles and just kind of loosen the toe joint, give a little pinch pull release, go to the second toe, do the same thing. The third toe, do the same thing. When you get to the fourth toe, give a little circle pull release all the way to the fifth toe and lower the leg down. Come to the other side, seated position, lift their left leg, slide your right leg under, rest your leg on yours and do some ankle rotation stretches five times in one direction. This way you're able to affect the entire rotation of the hip and create a little traction motion, which does relax the lower back. Work the rotational motion five times both directions. And now we're doing the twist the foot in the lateral position in a one, two, three, two, one position, coming back toward the ankle and reversing. Now into the internal rotation, three, one, two, three to the toes and work your way back down to middle foot, one toward the ankle and release. Crack the toes, do a few thumb circles on the big toe, the second toe, pinch release, third toe, circle, pinch release, fourth toe, circle, pinch release, fifth toe, circle, pinch release, lift their leg and release and lower it back down to the floor. Good. Now, come to side. We're working the client's right inside leg. We're palm press walking up. Here we're working the hands apart in the three, two, one pattern. And think of like a rolling pin when you're doing some rolling motions on the hip, as well as palm press walk to warm the inside ledge, preparing for working the inside energy lines, starting with line number one. Here, the right thumb lead, the left thumb follows. It's like connecting the dots. We're working our way all the way from the ankle up to the knee. When we get to the knee, we go above the knee onto the inside line of the adductor, inside line one, then working our way back down the same line to where we began. Now the second line, which is right about the middle of the inner thigh and leg, thumb press lead with the right hand left thumb follow right hand lead left thumb follow right thumb lead left hand follow right thumb lead left hand thumb follow now go back down left thumb lead right thumb follow left thumb lead right thumb follow left th thumb lead right thumb follow all the way back to where you started on the second line the third inside line basically is the line that goes right down the middle of the back of the leg. You work your way up this line to the knee, come upside the inside thigh, work your way up to a safe distance near the groin, come back down toward the knee. The left thumb will lead, right thumb follow, coming all the way back down to the Achilles tendon at the calcaneus. Now we're going to palm press say goodbye working our way back up the leg so that when I get to the knee, the hands separate. The right hand will go up, the left hand will go down. Once they go all to the either end of the leg, my right hand is on her hip, left hand on the ankle. Then we're going to switch to the outside lines of their left leg. Come to a seated position, use your left foot to kind of press their foot inward so that you can access the lateral edge of their leg. And here on palm press saying hello in the one, two, three, two, one. The hands meet at the knee, and then we're going to palm press walk together all the way down to the ankle. Now we're working the outside three lines, the right hand lead, the left thumb follows. Because I'm working within a one hour time frame, I'm going relatively quickly here across the lines. I don't like to skip the lines. I want to work these energy lines in every session because preparing the legs, and this really sets the rhythm for the entire Thai massage session. Come down to the bottom of the end of the first line. We're going up the middle of the lateral leg, working up, and then 
right thumb lead left thumb follows right thumb lead left thumb follows when you get to the top of the lateral side hip work your way back down so that the left hand will lead right thumb follow and come all the way down back to the ankle here we're going to work the outside line number three right thumb lead left thumb follow come all the way up to where the knee is skip over the lateral edge of the knee continue all the way up working just on the kind of lateral edge of the hamstrings and the abductor musculature up around the tensor fascia lato, which basically is on the outer side of the hip. But then when you come back down, I'm going to say goodbye with the palm press on the outside edge of the leg. We completed the inside and outside lines while seated on the side of their body. And now what we do is we switch over to the other side. We're going to start with their left inside line saying hello by palm press walking up along the inside line when you get to the knees let the left hand go up and the right hand go down and just prepare the leg for deeper work with the acupressure points that we're going to apply along the sin lines on the inside we're working the inside line number one left hand lead right hand follows left thumb lead right thumb follows think of it as connecting the dots and you're holding a pressure point the entire time as you work your way up and then we're going to work our way back down where the right thumb will lead left thumb will follow coming all the way back down to the knee we're going to jump over the knee and the right hand will lead left thumb follow coming all the way back down to the ankle we're going to go to the inside line number two basically right in the middle of the medial leg we're going to work our way all the way up with the left thumb lead right thumb follows and when you get to the knee jump over the knee and work your way up along the inside line on the inside thigh work your way all the way back down where the right thumb leads left thumb follows when you get to the ankle come down to inside line number three very close to the medial the middle of the very back of the leg work your way all the way up it's important to stimulate the energy lines in the legs to prepare for the entire session. And here, that's why we take ample time. We're saying goodbye with the palm press. Palm press in, release, press, release. Give a little shake on the hip to kind of release the inside thigh, hip joint. We're going to the lateral edge of the right leg. So I'm just doing a little bit of palm press hello to warm the lateral leg up. I'm going to hold her foot in with my right foot to keep the lateral edge of the leg open after saying some hello with the palm press alternate walking down to the ankle. Now, left thumb leads, right thumb follows, working our way all the way up to the knee. When we get to the knee, the left thumb will lead, right thumb will follow. Following line one, coming back down. When you get to the knee, the right hand will jump over, the left thumb will join, hold that point, right thumb lead, left thumb follow, all the way down back to the ankle. When we get to the second line, the left thumb lead, the right thumb follow, work your way all the way up to the knee, the left hand jumps over, the right hand jumps, you work your way up to the TFL muscle, tensor fascia lata. We're basically following right along the line of the IT band, the iliotibial band. And when you get to the knee, you come down, work along the lateral edge of the shin. And when you get to the ankle, we're gonna go to number three line, line number three, working my way up, left thumb lead, right thumb follow, jump over the knee, work your way all the way up the posterior lateral hip, and then work your way back down, right hand lead, left thumb follow, jump over the knee, left hand follows the right hand all the way back down we're going to say goodbye with the palm press so we're going to palm press work our way back up the leg when you get to the knee the left hand will go above the knee up toward the hip the right hand will go down toward the ankle and make a little rolling motion to release tension out of the hip reset your position so you come down we're going to open the fallen tree pose we're going to grab under the knee bend the knee bring the foot near the other leg and test to see if the knee can go down toward the floor. Here we're palm press walking up the inside of the thigh. The left hand will go, my right hand will go up on her calf while my left hand goes up the thigh. And then we walk all the way back down to the knee and ankle. Now we're going to butterfly the hands and work in one, a two, a three toward the hip, back down two. So that's middle and adductors. One, back to just above the knee. 
Now we're going to just go a little bit of work here to continue to just kind of soften and loosen the hip. But now come to a seated position for foot press the hamstrings. Open their leg out to a 90 degree angle in relation to their knee and their hip. Take your left foot, put it in the hamstrings just behind. Middle thigh, press, release. Go a little closer to the hip, press, release. Go back to the middle thigh, press, release. And then go just to behind the knee, press, and release. Now hook their foot around your calf, take your right foot, press, release, two, press, release, go toward the hip, press, release, back to number two, press, release, and one. Now both feet walking, right foot lead, left foot follows toward the hip and back again, then cross the foot around so you can scoot close and we're going to work with a foot press of the quadricep on the outside line number one with the fingertips of your hands work your way up toward the hip down and here we're using some depotment with the fist on the thigh to just basically relax the thigh muscle and hip now release and take their knee up vertical align their heel close to their hip come to a kneeling position and Interlace your 10 fingers and kind of pull and traction the quad and the hip and just kind of roll the quadricep a little bit medially as you pull back and release back tension as you lean and pull. After you go down toward the hip and back up, we're going to use the ice pick technique where here the thumbs are being pressed into the middle, so inside line two and outside line two lines of the send lines as we go down and up toward the knee now we're going to thumb press this is the inside line one on the back of the leg and we're thumb on top of thumb pressing toward the hip and back again toward the knee to release the hamstrings now i'm doing what's called nutcracker the calf my fingers are interlaced and i'm grabbing hold of the calf press and push the muscle away from the bone to kind of really stretch and open up the calf and achilles and bring some blood flow into the lower limbs just basically loosen the calf and help to achieve a bit greater sense of ease and relaxation into the legs, which will have a uh, relationship through the whole body. Okay, now we're coming into the half kneel position. Place their foot into the hip and right hand is holding their other hip down as you lunge forward for one. You feel the edge rock back. Switch the right hand to number two. Lean forward, stretch into the hip while you brace their other hip down. Rock back, switch the right hand down to just above the knee, lean in and press, release the hip. Rock back, bring the right hand up to position number two, lean in, press, and release, good. Back up to number one, lean in, press, release their hip, creating a little bit of massage work on their abdomen with the thigh pressure on the right side of the ascending colon. Now we're gonna switch to palm press where we use the hand on the hamstring. We're gonna palm press the hamstring in a one, you rock back and move the hand down about middle hamstring, press two. You then find their edge, rock back, move the hand down, press one, three, sorry, near the hip. Good, lean back, come to number two position, press and release. Come back to number one, press and release. Good. Now, lateral hip open, put their foot into the crease of your hip, use your right hand and press into the hamstrings while creating a rocking motion in a two, going a little closer to the hip, three, move back to number two, come into the press of the hamstrings, you rock forward, one, good. Now from here, lateral hip open, take the knee across the middle line of the body, use your left hand to press into the hamstrings as you extend the leg, open the hamstrings while you press and massage the hamstrings while we stretch. Good, and then release, move your hand down to the number two, press, push the heel away, take the bend out of the knee as you release, and then release the pressure off of your left hand, move down to number three, press, push the heel away, let the knee bend, take the left hand back up to number two, lean in, press, release the hip, great way to stretch into the piriformis muscle and the lateral hip, come back to number one, lean in, press, stretch the heel away, and then release. Good. All right, we're going to do another foot press of the hamstring at the 90 degree of the hip. So you sit down, you use your outside edge foot, and you use your heel, and you really press, pull, and, and really massage. The, well, basically, massage the hamstrings deeply here. Now, you got to pay attention to the threshold of the client. And what I'm always doing is just listening to the body, paying attention to the reaction the client is giving. If, if you can notice her arms are staying so relaxed, She's not really, you don't see any like fidgeting motion in the body. You don't see her jumping or tensing. Here we're doing what's called, we're going to basically massage the 
the crease of the gluteal line. So I'm just bending the knee, putting the ball of the foot into the gluteal line, leaning back and traction the hip. Come forward, you push the knee, you move the foot a little deeper toward the that crease at the gluteal line. You lean back, pull, traction, give a little shake. And, release the hip joint we bend the knee and here we're going to take the foot a little bit wider this is the reclining hero pose and we've got to be careful that their inside knee can handle this kind of pressure but when we find the right alignment here we're going to do a little bit of palm pressure on the lateral edge of the hip i have my left hand massaging and working the tfl and the it band and then here i'm going to do a little bit of thumb pressure work as well right along the it band i'm always checking in and making sure like how does your knee feel if they have any pain i don't want to push down too hard because we want to make sure we take care of the meniscus on the medial edge of the knee here's the tie chop this is a uh basically a tie chop where the fingers hit each other good release bring the knee up we open the leg for the lateral reclining leg raise and we're going to swing the leg out to the side in a one just finding where the end feel is making sure not to go too far but taking far enough i'm using my other leg to brace it so it doesn't slide in her other leg doesn't slide inward so i'm kind of bracing over there this is number two. I'm just testing her edge, just kind of going really slow, getting asking for feedback, checking out to see like how is she holding up, how does it feel. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of work on the inner thigh, and this is called a blood stop. I found her femoral artery. I'm applying pressure. If someone has high blood pressure and or any reason why you should not be doing a blood stop then of course you can modify it now here i'm gonna i have her leg resting on my knee and i'm doing a little bit of massage work on her quadricep while at the same time dorsiflexing her ankle getting a nice stretch for the Achilles and calf and we completed the entire routine in the beginning on the one side of the body and we're now switching over to the other side so the reclining tree, we're gonna follow that exact same routine over on this side of the body, bringing balance and harmony to the mind, body, and soul. Yes, let's go there, why not? All right, so palm press, walk up the calf and down the adductor so that now my right hand's going toward the hip, left hand toward the knee, and my right hand's going toward the knee, and my left hand toward the heel. Okay, and then the next one is the butterfly. We work in the one, just above the knee, two in the middle adductor, three closer to the hip, a little shake, and then come down to the number two and back toward the number one position near the knee. Good, and then just, you know, feeling if there's some tension. On this side, I wanted to do it again because if I notice that one hip is a little tighter than the other, I'm gonna do a little extra work to loosen the tighter side. And so here, I'm just moving her hand out a little bit. I'm going to come to a seated position. I'm going to open her leg out to the 90 degree for the foot press of the hamstrings. So place your right foot at the back of the knee. Press in the one position. It's a press pull. To Notice I'm pulling her other leg at the same time that I'm pulling on her left leg so that the right and left leg, I'm traction the whole thing as I do the foot press. Working in the one, two, three, two, one again. Again, this hip I noticed was just slightly tighter, so I'm gonna give a little extra attention, sometimes working two passes. Here I switch over to the left foot press in the two, three, two, one pattern. And now the double foot press. My left foot lead, right foot follow, working toward the hip. It's like a press release, a press release, a press release. Good. Massaging the hamstrings. Now, when I get my both feet close to the crook of the knee, you take the foot, you hook it around the leg. So that way I'm going to scoot hips a little bit closer, open the knees, reach my hands around, massage the outside line, number one, with the fingertips working toward the hip and then coming back toward the knee. I'm going to follow with some tapotement. I'm going to use my left hand and just basically tap the quadriceps to release tension out of this really powerful muscle on the leg. Good. So from here, opening the leg out or up, the knee comes up, and I'm going to kneel. You kneel at their ankle, and you kind of hold the ankle with your knees. Now, interlace your 10 fingers, grab just below the knee on the quad, pull and release, and traction the hip joint. You can use a little bit of rotation, medial and lateral, to help release the musculature on the quad and then the ice picking so here you're unable to see my thumbs but what i have is the my thumbs i'm using the interlace grip as a way to create a lever to be able to create deep pressure now i'm switching the thumbs one on top of the other down the middle line on the back of the leg working down toward the hip and back up again to just at the base of the knee here nutcracker the calf i have my fingers interlace i'm grabbing the calf muscle pushing the heel of the palms together press the calf away from the bone and switch and work your way up from the knee down to 
the Achilles and back up again toward the knee. And we can work a couple of finger circles on the calf as well to loosen. Now, for the knee to chest, aka Bhavana Muktasana, take the left foot, place it into the crook of your hip, rock forward for one, go slow, release, move the left hand down to number two, and release, good. The number three, and release, good. Number two, press down, stretch into the hip, and release. Come back to number one, light pressure on the left hand on their quad. Sometimes that can be very sensitive, so feel it out. See if that works, good. All right. <clears throat> Ham, press on the hamstrings, number one, come down, middle hamstring, back of thigh, two, release, come down closer to the hip, near the ischial tuberosity, three, come back up to the middle hamstring, press in, number two, and come back to up just below the knee, and press in, number one. Good. Now we're going to lateral hip open, let the knee open out toward the side, and here I'm going to brace her opposing leg with my knee and press in one, two, and so basically just opening up the hip using hamstring press, working the adductor and hamstring muscles, two, and back up toward the knee, press in one. Good. Now we're going to go to the lateral hip open by cross medially pressing with the right hand extend the heel away to stretch the hamstring release the knee bend switch the hand to the number two press in with the right hand first open the hip while then do the hamstring stretch and then switch down to number three position press down extend the heel away to open up the hip and then come back to the number two position stretch and to the number one position and stretch. Good. All right, the 90 degree foot press hamstring on the back of the leg. We're gonna to come to a seated position, align their knee above their hip, grab a hold of the foot, press with the foot, pull. Here I'm working a little bit of the foot massage while I'm doing the foot press with the hamstring too. So you can multitask once you get good and you learn the routine. Back to the three, two, one, under the knee. Good. All right. From here, I'm going to switch so I can use my left foot. I push her knee forward. I curl my toes under, putting the my ball of foot right at about the gluteal line. Traction the hip with a little bit of up pressure through the ball of foot. Then bend the knee, move the foot down. It's like a ratchet effect. You then traction the leg with a little push pull and release. I teach Thai massage courses. So if you're interested in learning how to to do this in person you can come to the studio and i will have check our website palm beach time massage and also native yoga center.com for our next upcoming time massage training good so number three i press up into the where the ischial tuberosity is good and then now i'm gonna take the reclining hero so we bring her left foot a little wider than the hip and angle the knee inward toward the opposite leg but just make sure that inside knee doesn't feel any pain just doing a little bit of pressure, down press and press against the lateral edge of the hip to kind of work that musculature on the lateral edge of the hip. I'm just doing like a press release, press release. And here a little bit of pressure on the IT band to release the iliotibial band if you're a walker or a runner. This can feel amazing because this gets so tight. So here we're just, and, and also Thai massage is lazy man or lazy woman's yoga, the idea. Here's the Thai chop. And the release, the, the idea with the lazy woman yoga, she's staying completely relaxed and I'm moving her through an entire routine of stretches. But this is different from yoga because in yoga, we really have to activate our muscul musculature to actually hold the positions. Here's the number two. And in Thai massage, we have the ability to completely relax and allow the therapist the practitioner to move us around and through this process of releasing the body and, and trusting and relaxing allows for the body to open up. All right, good. I did a blood stop, practicing the blood stop on the inner thigh. Here we're going to rotate around, and I have my right knee on the ground, left foot on the floor, and I'm resting her heel against the tabletop of my left leg and doing a dorsiflex of the ankle while some palm pressure onto the quadricep to kind of release the ankle and the back of the leg. Here I went up and down and if, uh, just feeling the quadricep for any you know real tight areas and then just massaging it out. Lower the leg down, come to the bottom, pull the foot, give a little traction, a little shake. And now we perform the exact same routine on both legs. Both legs are equally stretched out and opened up. 
We did this work first to prepare now for a few stretches that we're going to do where the legs lift. We lift the legs up. This is similar to like a reclining stick pose. And now we're going to move into something that's similar to the plow pose. Um, we align the legs pressing above from the recipient's angle. Just relax. Let your body relax. Let me press your legs above and just release into your lower back and hips. Try not to resist. Allow for the hips to come up. I'm just steering the hips to make sure that she doesn't fall one side to the or the other now in yoga we have a posture called half lotus and here we're putting the leg i'm putting your leg into a half lotus position good just testing the knee the ankle and then here i'm going to create a one two three press onto the hamstrings and the lateral edge of the leg and a one so here we're stretching the hamstrings of the leg that's straight two and we're working the hip musculature on the outside edge of the hip three i'm going to come back up to the number two and then come all the way up to the number one strong press paying attention to their body good i'm going to reverse to the other side so we straighten up their left leg going to bend their right knee crossing it over the thigh testing to make sure that's even a possibility feeling how deep is the lotus how deep can the half lotus go always deep com or clear communication with the recipient never forcing them you know, sometimes in Thailand, though, what I notice is that they use really strong pressure. I've had a lot of Thai massage in Thailand. I've traveled all over Thailand receiving Thai massage all throughout the country. And really, that's one of the best ways that I've been able to learn. I've also taken training in northern Thailand with a teacher named Chong Kal Setakorn. I initially took training in 2001 with Chong Kal in, at his um, teaching studio called ITM, International Training Massage. And then I went back to Chong Kal in 2004 and continued my studies to become a certified Thai massage teacher. And hence, I do actually teach these sessions, which is actually why I'm here now teaching you. All right, so bend the knees. This one is very similar to Pavana Muktasana, where we attempt to stretch the hips and knees, whether her knees are resting on my knees. I'm doing a gentle press. And now this position is a much like what's called Baddha Konasana in yoga bound angle. I have the soles of the feet together and just basically opening the hips. I'm taking the gentler version. There's a lot of ways that we can do these positions much deeper. But in this one, because it's been a little while since I've had a chance to work with this client, I wanted to just kind of make sure that I go slow and steady and not over press into our sacred iliac joints. Okay, the legs are straight. We're going to give a little shake, some traction, and slowly lower the legs all the way back down. Good. Come to the kneeling position between the heels and do come back to this alternate palm press walking on the feet in the one, two, three, two, one pattern. I absolutely love Thai massage. I've been practicing Thai massage since 2001. Uh, recorded this video here in 2024. So I've been practicing Thai massage for the last 23 years professionally. Every day I do Thai massage with clients, sometimes two, three, four, five sessions a day. Um, I've made a, I make a really good living doing Thai massage. This is what I do <laughs> and I teach yoga, but anywho, okay. We're palm press walking up to the hips and when we get to the hips. Now we completed the routine on the legs. And again, I'm doing a, a shortened sequence. There's a, a much longer routine, but I'm, I'm fitting it into a one hour session here. So now I'm on the abdomen I'm going to do some palm press on the abdomen. I always ask the client, is it okay for me to apply pressure onto your abdomen? If there's a contraindication such as Crohn's disease and or perhaps uh, pregnancy or also it's ill-advised if a female or woman is experiencing menstruation. So we check in and make sure it's okay. So now just doing a little bit of palm pr pr uh, pressure on the nine points on the abdomen. I'm working in a clockwise direction following the movement of the food and or digestive material through the large intestine. Okay, now making some finger circles up along the sternum and come to the to the clavicle. Some finger palm press here at the shoulder joint. And now have a palm press on the shoulder and a palm press on the wrist. And I'm going to basically warm the inside line of the inner arm by palm press walking along the inside line of the arm. Notice I took a Thai massage cushion, put it off to the side of my Thai massage mat to make the Thai massage mat a little bit wider. So here, after doing some palm pressure on the inside line, I'm going to work the energy line, the inside line, the middle line, one actually, right down 
kind of just um, a medial of the biceps brachii. Here I'm going in between the radius and ulna in the forearm bones, and then thumb press walking up the sin line on the inside line of the arm. When I get to the shoulder, because the pattern is after doing the thumb line work of the acupressure points on the sin lines here, I'm going to say goodbye with the palm pressure work. Now we're going to work the outside line, middle line, uh, on the outer lateral arm. So we put the palm surface down. I'm going to do a little bit of palm pressure work on the lateral edge of the arm, working from the shoulder down to the wrist and basically massaging the arm and preparing for some deeper work of the acupressure points on the lateral edge on the sin line on the arm here on my right thumb lead left thumb follows when you get to the elbow you jump over and your right thumb lead left thumb follows right down between the radius and the ulna to the wrist on the way back up the left hand will lead and the right hand will follow until you come all the way up to the shoulder and then follow up with some palm press to say goodbye and then here I'm coming to the Thai hand massage and I'm going to work the five lines of the palm surface of the hands much like I did the five lines on the sole of the foot. So we work out to the thumb, do a little bit of thumb circle work here. I'm working down toward the index finger. You work the palm surface when you get to the finger, some finger circles. When you go to the second line, you work down the middle line. When you get to the middle finger, a little palm pull release here. I'm going down the ring finger. When you get to the ring finger, a few finger circles release and then to the pinky finger following the same fashion. Turn the hand over. I'm working in between the thumb and index finger to the thumb release and then between the second and third finger between the bones when you get to the index pull release. And then I go between the third and fourth finger, some thumb circles, come to the fourth finger, pull, actually that middle finger release. Then come between the pinky and the ring finger. When you get to the hand, the fingers get to the fourth finger pull release. And then work along the lateral edge of the pinky finger. When you get to the pinky finger circle release and then turn the palm up and give a little press. And we completed the work on that arm. We're going to go to the other side. So I bring my cushions with me and come all the way around to the other side. I have a kneeling cushion and then I have an arm cushion for arm to open up and move the pigtails out of the way, <laughs> get the hair out of the way. All right, so here we're going to palm press work along the shoulder down toward the elbow and then palm press uh, all the way out along the arm and do a little bit of warming up. Here I'm just doing some little wrist ro rotational wrist motions to basically loose up the shoulder musculature as well as the forearms here with a palm press. And we're gonna do the thumb pressure work on the in middle line of the inside arm. Here my right thumb lead, left thumb follows and come all the way down to the wrist. And then my left hand lead, left uh, right thumb follows back up to the armpit. And then from here, enjoying the, the client can enjoy a little bit of massage pressure work on the inside edge of the arm. And then we're going to work the outside edge of the arm. So I bring the arm a little closer to the body so the palm can lay flat on the floor. And then we're going to palm press walk along the lateral edge of the arm. And just kind of work toward the elbow. And then the left hand will go down toward the wrist, the right hand toward the shoulder. Thumb press work down the lateral arm. And so I'm following the same routine over on this side that I followed on the other. So in the process of learning to abbreviate and be able to fit what can take two and a half hours into one hour, I'm going to uh, select specific positions that are appropriate for the client based on their needs. I take an intake when the client comes in, ask them what specific areas they would like. I also inquire as to what type of pressure do you like, light, medium, or deep pressure? Now, if the client says deep pressure, our understanding of deep, the person that we worked on before's understanding of deep and the person we're currently working on's understanding of deep will be different. So, but we just get a baseline. Like if somebody says, hey, I really just want gentle pressure, then I just do some gentle pressure. If someone says, you know, I want deep, then I, what I say is I'm going to do deep pressure on you, but please communicate with me. Let me know if the pressure is too much at any point, I'm going to adjust to accommodate for the situation. So it's up to the, the giver to be able to know exactly how much pressure to give based off of the reaction of the client. But it's also important that the client understands that they can communicate and we are listening very important okay cool we finished that arm we're coming to the top here i have a little cushion i'm going to come to a seated position 
and do some palm pressure work on the shoulders. Now, I realize you won't be able to see exactly what I do with both hands, but you are able to see my right hand. And here I'm just using kind of like the way a cat needs a pillow. I have my thumb underneath, my forefingers on top, and I'm just palm press walking right and left a couple times to loosen up the shoulders. So here we're able to work the upper trapezius, and this is often an area that most people need a lot of attention, a lot of work. We could spend an entire hour just palm and thumb pressing on the shoulders and upper trapezius, but here after working some of the upper trapezius, now we're gonna work the neck. So I've removed the pillow from underneath her head so that I can actually get one hand under, hold while the other hand is using some thumb pressure along the neck musculature from the upper trapezius never press on the spine I'm switching hands I'm coming to the other side so that I can work on the neck with the thumb pressure working along the spinous and transverse processes now we want to be aware it's important that you look in an anatomy book for those of you that are actually doing Thai massage those of you that love receiving Thai massage that are listening you can hear kind of what some of the theory and the technique is so one of the ways that you learn the human anatomy is by giving and receiving, studying anatomy books, paying attention, asking lots of questions. But basically, we don't want to push in on the spinous and transverse process of the cervical vertebra, but we do have a lot of soft tissue that can be worked in between that little groove between the spinous and the transverse process. So here what I'm doing is just working some pressure point work on the neck and um, being able to, to feel for any tension. Now there's what's called the occipital ridge and here I have my fingertips kind of scooping under the skull at the base of the skull at the occiput and doing some finger pressure work at the occipital ridge, releasing any pressure and tension that we're holding, that the client is holding in the neck area. And there is a fairly lengthy massage process for the face and here I do an abbreviated face massage. However, if I feel that there's an area that's a little more tight or some restriction in the way that the head can turn to one side or the other, I'm just going to go off the feel of like what the situation presents. So I do follow a specific routine. I do follow the Nuad Boran, the Northern style Thai massage routine, but also I think it's important that we need to learn the routine and get the routine really good, but then be able to listen to the body that we're working on in the moment, see and read the signals and deliver what is absolutely necessary or what is appropriate and necessary in the moment. And this is how we can uh, observe a transformation basically from tense, tight, in a pain, a state of pain and we can help to alleviate these pain patterns and bring them into a state of calm. So now here I'm lifting her head, I'm, remo I'm placing the pillow back into the position, and now we're gonna prepare her for the side laying position. So just setting a few cushions up, getting ready. I open out her arm, put a body cushion pillow next to her body, grab her other hand, grab under her knee, and just roll her into the side laying position. Now. I can come uh, kneeling or sitting on facing her back and start working some palm pressure along the left side of the back. So remember I just mentioned, again, you're, I don't press on the spinal cord. Here I'm just kind of working in between the shoulder blade, the scapula, and the spine. So there's a bunch of muscles here, the rhomboid muscles. Um, there's a... The superficial ones are the rhomboids and but deeper though we can get onto the erector spinae and there's I mean, it's difficult to palpate what's called subscapularis but um, I do attempt to get a little underneath the sub the scapula so but here I'm doing some palm pressure along the energy lines on the back now there's one main line that we can approach and here as I get to the scapula I'm doing a little bit of pressure just inferior of what's called the spine of the scapula above the spine of the scapula we have what's called the supraspinatus um, so I like to also work that muscle here we have the arm on the side body and we're basically just pressing down on this on the side arm doing a little bit of an arm massage but also this feels really good on the side body it feels so amazing just giving a little rocking motion while applying some pressure here i'm going to open the arm and, and, and target loosening up the shoulder joint so i'm going to do about three times above the head and then bringing the arm back up and above the head and back up and notice i'm working a little bit of rotation here we have the spine twist and i gently 
I use my thigh to let her arm lay on my thigh. And then with my other hand, I'm going to gently press the hip in the opposite direction to create some spinal rotation. But I'm definitely checking in with the client to find out like, how does your back feel? And I'm only going to move the body into the spine twist as much as appropriate for that individual. If I find out you have a herniation in your back, I'm going to work much differently. So I'm always working according to what the whatever's going on with the client so here this is an internal rotation of the shoulder joint and this splays the scapula open and i can actually get my thumb under and this is where again difficult to really get under here depending upon how flexible the shoulder is but working some of that musculature under and again just a nice little external rotation of the shoulder bringing the arm forward and letting it relax now we're going to do some hip and psoas stretching. So I grabbed underneath her left leg. I have my right knee pressing against glute max. And as I push with my knee against her hip to stabilize that, I'm pulling back on the leg to help loosen up quad and psoas on that leg. I'm going to let the knee come down. Now I'm going to implement the, it's kind of like a laying down standing bow. I'm going to use both my feet and I can pull and stretch the psoas and the quad while at the same time traction the shoulder joint. I'm going to use my feet on the glute and on the low back to kind of massage the back with the feet while implementing the stretch. And this is why I love Thai massage. I mean, I love doing table massage too, working with the body on a table. But what's so amazing about being on the floor is that here I'm able to do these deep stretches, but also work the massage. I'm using all hands and feet so that it's a really dynamic experience. So here, this is a really cool one. This is called, well, we're gonna do a twist basically. I take the upper arm above, the lower arm below. She catches a hold of my hand. I have one hand bracing behind. I'm gonna pull back. I'm gonna be careful of the shoulder. She relaxes, she hangs, I pull. Her whole body goes into a deep twist, bringing her up and lowering down, doing three times. Let her set up again, big inhale. As I pull, she exhales, loosening, working accordingly. Look how good she's doing, just letting her body hang, her arm arm or head good and release we'll do that one more time i lean back using my legs not my back pull lift up deep spine twist and lower all the way down good let's do the other side so i take her leg get it prepared i get her other arm ready i'm just gonna roll back onto her back getting ready for the other side look how good she i'm gonna set her hips yeah she's kind of bent there i'm gonna lift up pull the hips over Bring the legs back down. I'm gonna grab the pillow, put it beside the body, take the opposite arm, pull her over. She doesn't have to do anything. She stays so lazy the whole way through. Good, I come around to the other side, come to a sitting position. You can do sitting or kneeling. And here I'm gonna start to palm press on <clears throat> the other side of the back. So here we do the both side laying. Side laying positions I think is one of the best part of time massage. It allows for a deep back massage while in a comfortable side laying shape again possible to do this on the table so much more fun to do on the floor i'm using my thumbs searching for tension along what are called the erector spinae musculature there's this long cord like muscles that go all the way from the sacrum up to the along the back attaching along the processes of the spine as well as coming uh, along the rib cage, we have the ones that are closest to the spine is spinalis, then we have longissimus, and then we have the iliocostalis. So here I'm working these muscles right now. I got my right hand. Oh, actually, I already gave up on that. Okay, good. <laughs> now I'm coming back up. I got the arm on the body. I'm going to do the side press on the arm and just doing that down pressure massaging in the one, two, three, two, one fashion on the lateral arm. Good, following the same sequence and routine, I have to remember everything that I did on the other side, here on this side. So the great thing about practice is this will become so natural, you hardly even have to think or remember the, the routine, it's just there, right? But then because you pick a new routine every time, perhaps, that then you gotta remember when you do one side, you gotta pay attention so you can remember to do that same routine on the other side. Here comes the spine twist. I'm gonna use my leg, let her arm come down, rest on the thigh, one hand braces the shoulder while the opposite, pressing on the hip and just working that nice twist motion while massaging into the lower back. Feel the, I'm using my heel palm, my palm pressure, sorry, against the musculature on the back and just creating like a really easy, gentle rocking motion. I did. All, I've also studied Lomi Lomi in Hawaii with a teacher on the Big Island, Hawaii, Dr. Dane Kiolani Silva, 
And I like to implement some of the Lomi Lomi rocking motion here in the Thai massage. I'm a big fan of Lomi Lomi and Thai, Thai Lomi. And so here I'm just blending these two together. Um, good. All right, so now that internal rotation so we can work under the scapula. Here are my left fingertips, I'm digging up underneath. And now I'm going to switch to using my thumb. I'm just going to massage some of the tension out of the scapula and shoulder blade area here on <clears throat> her right side back. My right hand is bracing the anterior portion of the shoulder, creating a gentle external rotation motion while the shoulder is in a state of internal rotation so that we get this opposition effect, right? So then I'm gonna release, bring her arm back up, found a little spot there. I'm gonna kind of work that area out a little longer. Good, and then just let the arm relax. Well, it's time to do the quad and so I stretch on the other side. So I'm gonna use my left knee to begin. I have a kind of squat knee, left knee press into the hip. I got my right hand braced under the knee. My left hand's gonna grab the quad. I'm gonna pull back and stretch the psoas and the quadricep on her other side hip. And so just using a combination of like a rock, like a push rock pull, like I'm kind of pushing with my left knee, pulling with the body. The key to Thai massage for it to feel good for the recipient, the giver, we need to learn how to rock and use our center of gravity so that our, the amount of energy we apply is the least amount to create the maximum effect. Here's that laying down side bow pulling position where I'm gonna push with my feet and pull with the arm and the leg. Now again, every client is different so if you're watching this and you're going god that looks like feels so good correct it does if you're looking at it going that would hurt me so bad i promise you and if you're a time massage therapist watching this listen to your client i know you already know that but i'm just reminding you like we got to make sure it feels good for them like we're not trying to torture them it needs to feel good this is my at least this is my uh, philosophy all right so catch a hold of the hand here comes a deep spine twist Use your legs, not your back. Lean back, pull, lift them up. As long as your shoulder's okay. If they have any shoulder instability, be careful with this one. Don't pull like that if they have shoulder instability. Here we go. Leaning back, testing the waters, going slow. Let her hang, pull, feel a deep stretch. Just hang from your arm. Good, and release. One more time. As I pull, you release, relax, feel the deep stretch. Just get a lift and lower back down. Great job. All right. So from here, now we're going to switch into the prone position. This one, I just have the client. I tell them, please roll over. I'm going to remove the pillow. Turn your head to whichever side is comfortable. Which way is it? Yep. Okay, good. Let your arms come down. Just relax. I'm going to have her high enough on the mat that when she points her toes, the feet are on the mat. And this way I can start palm pressing onto the bottoms of the feet. Yeah, do you see me check the time? I got my clock back there. <laughs> you can probably see that clock. I got about 10 minutes left, about eight minutes left in this massage. That's You can see that minute hand up there. It's getting close to the top. So I'm paying close attention. I have a strategy. I can go deeper into the time management strategies. I'll do that in another video. But here, okay, I'm palm pressing, walking down the hamstrings. When I get to the knee, I'm going to jump over the knee. I'm going to palm press, walk down the calves, coming toward the heels. And then when I get to the bottoms of the feet, I'm going to alternate palm press on the bottoms of the feet. Okay, now bending both knees, one foot cross over the other. I'm going to give a little gentle press here to stretch the quads and the knee bending, the, the knee flexion. Now, I'm also very alert and aware as to what type of sensation is occurring for the person, for the recipient in the lower back. If there's some herniations in the low back, I'm going to be a little gentler with this because when we do this sort of press, it creates a little bit of an anterior tilt of the pelvis, and that can compress the disc space in the low back. Now, this is called the open hip lotus, and so I tucked one foot in behind the other knee, and I'm using one hand, palm pressing in the one, two, three, down the thigh, one, two, three, two, one, back up toward the hip, while pressing the other knee into flexion with the foot sandwich in the calf. Now, here I'm going to switch over to the side with the same position. I have my right knee resting in her glute max, and I'm going to pull up while I press down to give a uh, hip twist. So I'm pushing down with the knee, holding the hip in place, letting the other hip lift up, twist. Do another little switch of the knee positioning, pull up, lift, give a nice big stretch to the front of the thigh, release. Now, you're going to do the same thing but a little deeper. My right hand is on the low back, push down, pull, give a nice big full body twist and release. Good. Number two position, about middle back, come up 
and release good the right hand comes up a little higher just on the uh, vertebral border of the scapula lean back pull release come down to the number two position lean back pull and release come down to the number one position now if you're new to doing Thai massage practicing this is a quick pace I don't expect you to go this fast just want to give you a feeling for what this is all about all right take the other foot tuck it into the back of the knee and then flex that heel and then i'm doing the one two going down toward the knee three coming back to middle hamstring quad i'm not quad middle hamstring three and then just a little bit extra pressure if necessary i might repeat those steps a few times good i'm going to switch to the side put my knee in the hip going to get my grip my left hand's holding your ankle both hands pull back while i apply a little pressure on that knee in the hip switch the positioning lean back pull and release good move that knee in a little bit more ready lean in pull and release i got to switch my position now so that i can deliver a little bit more i had her turn her head to the side so that when we do the the hip twist i lean in with my left hand supporting or bracing the back now you when you when i bring my hand up notice how when i pull this is going to bring the twist a little bit higher up into the thoracic middle spine lower down now my left hand comes up to just on the inside of the scapula lean back pull and this way we're direct excuse me we're directing the twisting motion to different segments of the spine working all the way up and all the way back down Okay, cool. We did that. I'm preparing the hands to get ready for opening the foot up, knees a little wider than hips. And here I'm going to actually sit on the bottoms of your feet. This is called rocking chair massage. I butterfly the hands at the low back and I'm going to alternate palm press walk up the back while sitting on the feet. This is easier said than done. I am in a comfortable position here. I'm actually sitting on her feet but it does require enough sensitivity to, for the client, sensitivity to know if the client is feeling comfortable. Here I'm doing simultaneously palm pressure on the back, working down the spine toward the waist in a little rocking motion. Here on the glute max and down the hamstrings, I'm gonna work my way back and come back up, applying deep pressure here if they can handle it. Just again, are they relaxed? Are you relaxed? It's key that you stay relaxed. If you get all fired up, I don't want to do it. I don't want to fire you up. I'm going to try to get your nervous system just to calm down. Okay, this is Cobra. So I have her grab my wrist. I grab her wrist. My knees are on her hamstrings. I instruct her to have her chin forward. I lean back. She relaxes. Okay, she's going to inhale as we go up. See how her shoulders stretch? She's just hanging. I pull back. I lean back. I bring her up. I slowly lower back down. I ask, are you okay? How did that feel? Yep, everything's good. Let's do it again. Inhale, breathe. She breathes in. Exhale, breathe. Now, inhale again. I try to bring her up a little bit higher on the inhale. Her head came up. Look at that deep back bend. She seems pretty comfortable. You can see it in her face. She's slowly lowering back, back down. Good. I'm going to do one more time. Slow movements, not jerky. Slow and steady. You got to really focus. You got to control your movement. Slow and steady. Look at that. Awesome. <laughs> That's a, it's actually pretty cool to watch from this angle, to be honest. All right. So she's coming all the way down. She turns her head to the side. I'm just going to do a little follow up, say goodbye routine. And this is like down dog. I apply a little bit of pressure. I'm going to alternate palm, press, walk down. Well, in this case, up toward her shoulders. And now I'm just going to do just a basically like a say goodbye routine to the back. Just kind of push and see, I'm kind of, this is that Lomi Lomi action that I love. It's like this rocking motion. A lot of it's like, let's imitate the ocean, the motion in the ocean. So you do like a little bit of press, release and press. And here I'm doing the, the myofascial release style where you kind of do a cross body stretch, press, release. And if I have more time, I might spend more time here, but just, again, coaxing her body just to go into a state of calm. And just let all that tension release. Just working on her right hip now. Just press and release up the back. Good. Back up. little fingertip pressure there and then it seems pretty good all right so here at this point i'm gonna ask her to roll over onto her back and she's gonna go ahead and turn all the way around because for the purposes of this uh, demonstration 
Mm-hmm. She went halfway. <laughs> so you're going to be able to see her from the front and you'll be able to see what I do when I once I get her all the way up. So here I'm going to grab her feet, bring the legs up, and I'm going to create a cross leg position so that here I'm just doing a little bit of massage on the bottoms of the feet, but here I'm going to cro- bend her knees, cross the legs. I'm going to rest her ankles against my knees. I grab her hands. I'm going to pull her up, give her a nice stretch across her back, and I'm going to walk back slowly and bring her all the way up into the seated meditation position. All right, hair's out of the way. I'm going to do a little bit of upper trapezius stretching motion. Hands are pressing down on the upper trapezius, releasing tension out of the upper back, upper trapezius. Being aware that if she had herniations in her back, I'd be careful about how strong I press here because um, we don't want to overly compress the disc space. But she let me know that she has good spinal health ahead of time and no major herniation issues. So here I'm just kind of working in the one, two, three. Now I'm going to incorporate some thumb pressure work on her upper trapezius and a little thumb circle work as well wherever we feel some tension. I have my knee bracing against her back to help <clears throat> sustain her upright position. And this gives the opportunity. Now, from the practitioner side, strong engagement of the bandhas, those of you that are yoga practitioners, if you've never heard that term, that basically just means engage your core, squeeze your belly in. Because I am leaning forward, I have to take good care to protect my back, so I'm making sure that I have my core engaged while I'm working all the time. Okay, we grab the arms here. I'm going to create a little traction for her shoulder. I lean back, let her head relax, and then just kind of pull and stretch the whole body from the hips all the way through the shoulders to the hands. As she leans back, I pull and release. And one more time, I'm going to lean back, pull and release. I'm going to bring the arms down and forward behind the back. I'm going to come to a seated position. This one's called row the boat. I have my feet on her back. And what I'm going to do is just walk my feet up and down on her back while pulling. This will bring her into a combination of like the cat cow motion of the here, the cow, the back bend. Now as released, she takes a gentle flexion shape. So we're just going extension and flexion, doing deep back massage with the feet on her back while pulling and releasing the pec major musculature of her shoulders and chest and working those lines. Now here we're even stimulating the send lines through the stretching energy of the body. So we did a lot of work of pressure point along the send, but we're also working the lengthening of the send in this myofascial to connective tissue in the body to, to basically just kind of release and let go of all this tension that we store up from all the stress that we face through every day. The Thai massage is such an incredible way to get connected and grounded within the framework of our body, but also to feel the energy of the body and have the energy stimulated in the body to basically create a well-rounded routine where all the organs, internal organs, harmoniously work together. And so the idea through Thai massage is let's try to bring balance into the body through the, the stimulation of the pressure, the increase of circulation through the body, and then this deep relaxation that comes at the end. What's really cool about Thai massage as well that we are finishing in the seated position is that often people are laying on a table and you say okay the massage is over and then they have to peel themselves up off of the table but here we're ending the Thai massage the Thai the traditional Thai massage session with a seated position I'm just doing a a combination of some press release work on her back while she's seated Uh, If someone's storing tension at the low back, this can be a good place to work. Notice my rocking motion. I'm not just using my arm. I'm actually trying to like use my body weight to affect the pressure. And then so I might lean in and do a little circle press. And then we have um, what is called the, uh, well, yeah, I'm going to actually finish up with a nice little shoulder stretch here on her upper trapezius. A little bit of work on her neck again, letting her head fall gently forward. I have my fingertip pressure on her occiput, doing a little bit of thumb pressure around the temples and working the musculature on the scalp. So we have temporalis right where my thumbs are. There's a muscle called temporalis right right above the temples on the side of the skull. And it can feel really good to have the base of the occiput worked at the same time with the temporalis muscle. All right come into a close find a comfortable position I'm going to use what's called the tie chop the tie chop is uh, just a the fingers are loose 
and I'm just tie chopping, <laughs> doing the tie chop, going up and down the spine, just re releasing any tension, and then I'll say goodbye. Here now, come into a seated position and just take your time at the end of the session to integrate the entire practice. And so in the world of meditation, Thai massage is deeply woven in with the meditation world, meditation tradition. And the technique here I'll teach it to you is called Anapana which is a technique of Vipassana, which I learned from a teacher named Gwenka from the Dhamma.org Institute. And so the idea is to take your attention to the triangular area of the nose so that between the eyes at the brow down to the corners of each mouth, imagine that's a triangle and when you breathe in and out of your nose, you take all of your attention right to this area. Just allow the awareness to come into a observing respiration. And so as you breathe in and out of the nose, just keep your attention here at this one point. And see if you can feel the inhale moving in through the nostrils and the exhale moving out of your nostrils. And just relax and release. Feel your ability to hold your attention steady on your breath. It's just as you're breathing in, be aware I am breathing in. And as you're breathing out, be aware I am breathing out. And create this steady awareness. As you're breathing in through the nose, aware I am breathing in. As you breathe out of the nose, aware I am breathing out. Good. Sit nice and tall. Feel the alignment of your spine moving into a nice harmonious place of balance. Front to back, side to side. If you're watching or listening laying down, just feel an overall relaxation through your whole body. Observe again inhalation through the nose and exhalation out of the nose. Good, just take your time. Feel how it's possible to achieve well-being, a state of peace and tranquility. Hold the attention with the breath. Breathe in through the nose, breathe out of your nose. Good, breathe in through the nose, breathe out of your nose. It's important to take the time to get grounded and present. Release, but hold your attention very steady, very steady. Feel the inhale through your nose, the exhale out of the nose. Again, just continue this. Namaste.